Today we're going to explore the beauty of cross-validation. We're going to use the same data set as before, the, the one that we use with KNN. I'm going to try to use this uh, correct functionality. So before that, if you go to my GitHub webpage, you can find, you can go here. Okay, remember github.com, MarioCast73 and this direction. So as I was saying, if you go here and you go to scripts, I have included one of uh, one interesting carrot snippet that you can use in in our studio. If you don't know anything about the snippets, go to my video about the snippets. So you can copy this and plug this into our studio. Let's go, let's do this. So let's go back to our studio tools, global options, code, edit snippets, and if you go to the end. Remember this one from the other video. I'm going to add this carrot this snippet. And this is going to be beautiful. Let's save it. Okay, and here we go. So first of all, let's call the library carrot and then the data set that I was mentioning. Let's explore a little bit this data set as usual. So we have two predictors that are numerical values x1 and x2. And this categorical variable x, as you can see, we have two factors and levels no and yes. Okay, so let's use this carrot snippet. Carrot snippet. This is something written by me. It's not something standard, but I, but I love these sort of things. So if you type carrot and then you wait a little bit, you see this snippet here, and you have this summary here. Remember that anytime you press the tab key, you're going to go to a different al to different arguments. So we're going to start with the first argument, which is the da the name of the data set then the name of the variable and so on and so forth. So let me show you this. Let's click in caret. And now imagine that I, instead of typing data, I type, I don't know, Titanic. And this is beautiful because automatically you can see that Titanic is filled in some other parts of this the snippet. So here the name of our data set, remember, is data. So I'm going to call this data. And then I press the tab key. Okay, can you hear that? And then again, this could be called survive or whatever. And and as you can see here, these changes are going to be propagated in different parts of, of the code. Here I'm going to use just Y. And then the, the percentage of this uh, use for training and for testing. Let's change this to 75. And then again, press tab. And now the method. So this is the beautiful of carrot. So you can perform with the same, almost with the same syntax at like KNN. You could use GLM. You could use a partition tree uh, that we are going to discuss in another video. Here I'm going to play with KNN, then tab again, and then the parameters. For KNN, remember that the only hyperparameter is K, so you can use this K. Let's we, we could use CP or whatever. Let's plug this K again, tab key, and then the values that we want to explore. If I leave this, uh, I leave, if I leave this like that, I'm going to explore just one parameter, and this is what I'm going to do in the first demo. So here we go. And as you can see here, we have all the steps in a machine learning project. So first, we're going to define the training and testing data sets. Here, 75 percentage. Let's run this. Then we have the training set. As an exercise, you can try str data trn, or you can use n rows, n row data trn, and compare to to the whole data set and with testing. So you can see that we have actually 75% uh, length for each data set. Okay, the next step, let's run this. Next step is train control. This is this is performed for cross-validation. In this case, I'm not going to do any cross-validation because I'm just playing with one hyperparameter value. So in this case, k equals 10. So this basically, this sentence is not going to do anything, but let's leave it like that. And now we're going to fit a KNN algorithm in which I'm going to fit Y versus all the other parameters in the data set. In this case, the features are X1 and X2. I'm going to use only the training part of the data set. I'm going to pre-process the data. Remember that KNN is very sensitive to, to the dimensions of the variable. So with, with this, I'm going to subtract the mean of the parameters. So if I, let, let me do some calculations here. If I calculate the mean of data training x1 then i'm going to subtract this and i'm going to divide by the standard deviation so again if you compute sd the basically what i'm saying with this with this sentence is that take any feature x1 and x2 subtract the mean so center the data and divide by the standard deviation so scale the data okay remember that from another video 
And here I'm going to say what parameter I'm using, in this case k equals 10. And here we go. So this is a k in n training. So let's do some predictions. If I run this just simply by calling the predict function, and I'm here you can see I'm using this fitting and the testing data set. Okay, if I run this and I look inside this prediction variable, I'm going to see categorical values. Okay, I can change the syntax. So if I run this, instead of using this, I use type equal prop. Then let's run, let's call this that prop. And if you look inside this new variable, print.prob, you could see probabilities. Probability of yes and probability of no. As you can see here, as we only have two categories, so one is one minus the other. So 30% 30 per 30 for yes, that means 70% for no, and so on and so forth. Okay? Okay, let's forget about this, but okay, keep that in mind for another video. And now we're going to compute the confusion matrix. Remember, we're going to create a table in which we are taking the testing category, so this is from from the data set, and these are the predictions. So let's go. And as you can see here, we have a lot of true negatives and true positives, and a few false negatives and a few false positives. So accuracy is pretty high. In this case, as you can see, 88%. This is huge in, in general for a classification algorithm. That means that KN is pretty good with that. Okay, so now if I plot this, sorry, if I print this, I'm going to see that this accuracy again. And kappa, and if I plot this, as you can see here, we have an error. Why I'm getting this error? Because I'm using just one value of k. And basically this plot, when you plot a fit by itself, basically what you are trying to compare is different outcomes of the cross-validation. Okay? So here, look, what I'm going to do is repeat all the process, but instead of using just one value of k, I'm going to tune this a little bit. So let's use again this uh, snippet, caret with cross-validation. Okay, so again, caret, click here. Again, I'm going to use the value data, y, 80%, k and n, k equals 10, and here I'm going to change this. So instead of using k equals 10, I'm going to use different values. I'm going to use a sequence from k equals 5 to a equals 100 by 5. So basically this means that I'm going to run this algorithm over and over again using k equals 5, 10, 15, and so on and so forth. And again, what's the meaning of this? I'm going to use cross-validation and I'm going to use 10, 10 fold cross-validation. Okay, so let's run this again, just in case. Okay, let's see the predictions. Now, I have higher accuracy, and why is that? Because I'm training my K and N with different values of K, and cross-validation is giving me the best one. So let's plot, let's print this one. And as you can see here, in, in, in the case before, we have just, let me show you this, just one value of the accuracy and one value for the kappa. Remember that the higher kappa is the best, because kappa equals one means that we are nailing the prediction with our model, okay? So in this case, we have different values of k, as you can see here. These values of k comes from this sequence, so you can change this if you wish. And for different values, we have different values of accuracy and different values of kappa, okay? So let's now plot this. And as you can see here, this, uh, we have this beautiful plot in which basically we're changing the number of neighbors. The number of, This is k, and we're plotting here accuracy. And as you can see in this plot, the highest accuracy comes from k equals 40. You can see this by simple inspection, so k equals 40. Uh, accuracy here is 0 0.9375, okay? And this is what you see in this summary. So this is beautiful, because instead of playing or plugging k, different values of k, and trial and error uh, until we find the best one, in this case, basically, cross-validation is giving us the best outcome. So uh, this is why cross-validation is, is the queen in town, okay? Let's do this in another way. So imagine that you don't have a, a feeling of what's the best value of, of this range. You have this rule of thumb. If you take n row data, we have a thousand observations. If you take the square root of this, this is a rule of thumb. So basically we should play with values around this one. This is what I'm doing here. So I'm, I'm ranging from five to a hundred. So 31 is more or less over there. But there is another way to call cross-validation, and you can comment this, and instead of using tune length. And basically, cross-validation is going to take 50 
50 values of k uh, that this is basically guessing what values are I going to use so uh, starting with the default value so let's run this again prediction and let's take a plot and here you can see that we have 50 values so you, you don't need to count them and now the, the maximum one is in 35 so for 35 we have here we go so we have this accuracy and basically this corresponds to this one so basically this is all you need to know in cross validation but i'm going to give you a bonus track okay because here we're maximizing accuracy but maybe we want to maximize kappa or if we're playing with some i know training with vaccines or some COVID testing or whatever maybe we want to improve sensitivity so what we can do here is change this line here so let's copy this here and we're going to do a new summary that we are going to use a multi-class summary so let me try this first and run again and as you can see here oh sorry uh, let's run this oh sorry we need a bracket okay let's run the, with this new parameter here let's plug in the same line and then train again make some predictions and then plot the confusion matrix and play the outcome and, uh, and the outcome as you can see here has tons of information so not only accuracy and kappa but also different values like sensitivity positive predictive value and so on and so forth so imagine that you want to maximize let's say kappa so here we're going to add a new value and we'll just use metric equals kappa so let's plot this again so you can compare okay so this is maximizing accuracy and now let's train again by using this metric kappa blah 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 confuse your matrix print this okay and now plot and as you can see here now we are maximizing kappa and now remember the maximum is obtained for 35 and this 35 basically means that this is the value for which not the accuracy but the kappa is the highest so let's go there to this line and as you can see here accuracy can change in another lines in this case we also are maximizing accuracy but basically with here we're maximizing kappa which is the second column so again you could change this metric we could use sensitivity sensitivity and then if you plot okay we're maximizing sensitivity here the maximum is for 49 okay of course if you run this over and over again maybe you get different values but but you get the idea so main messages of this video use cross validation you can play with a metric and you can do a couple of things tune your own parameters if you know enough about this algorithm so this should change for different methods or simply let train the carrot uh, train function to play with different values okay